Hey everyone, coming at you with a Winter Todd skilling boss fight guide, if you will. Now, Winter Todd is purely a skilling boss in RuneScape based around fire making, but it can also get you other types of experience. But you will without a doubt be coming here for fire making experience and nothing else. You'll need a minimum level of 50 fire making to go to Winter Todd, and I would recommend going here until really level 99 fire making. It's not necessarily the fastest place, but you'll only be earning money here, and the rates that you'll get by burning other logs is very minimal, so I wouldn't really recommend it. And Winter Todd world is world 309, so go to world 309 when doing Winter Todd as there's no chance in hell you will ever want to do this alone because it's a waste of time doing it alone. Now, first off, how to get to Winter Todd. It's not actually too hard to get to Winter Todd. First, you'll want to take Vio's ship in Port Serum to Zio. From there, you simply walk to Winter Todd. Obviously, it's not really too far, so it's like five minutes if you're slow and don't have any sort of running, and yeah, shouldn't really take time. If you have gone to Winter Todd before though, you can simply teleport there using a game's necklace, which I would obviously recommend because it's instantaneous. Now, you can simply start Winter Todd by walking into the big doors, and I would recommend bringing jugs of wine for healing as they are cheap and heal 11 HP, which is really good. Reduces your attack, or strength, I can't remember, but it really doesn't matter. Now, Winter Todd does damage based on your max health, so I would recommend you go here before having over 70 HP, and hell, even if you can, go there at 20 HP, because since it's percent health damage, it won't really make a difference, it'll only mean you'll have to heal a lot less. For this fight, you'll need an axe, hammer, knife, tinderbox, and unfinished rejuvenation potions, but I wouldn't necessarily bring the unfinished rejuvenation potions, but we'll get into that later. And all of those items can be grabbed at Winter Todd in the initial area other than the axe. As long as you have a steel axe or higher, you're good to go because steel is where cutting caps out at Winter Todd, so you don't really need a rune axe or anything, but if you have it, obviously might as well bring it. Now wearing warm clothing reduces the damage you take at Winter Todd, and there are specific items which are classified as warm clothing. I would recommend wearing a Santa hat, Fremenic gloves, a fire staff of any type, and yak hide armor, as you can have a maximum of four warm pieces of clothing on to reduce damage any more than that, and it's a waste. And those are all relatively cheap items, so I'd recommend buying those. The full list of warm clothing is a lot longer, and if you really must know, you or feel free to Google it, because it's about 30 or so items, or maybe 20, not really worth getting into. So, starting off Winter Todd, obviously you walk into the doors. You can go either left or right, it doesn't matter. There are braziers on the left, right, far left, and far right of Winter Todd. It's generally recommended you just go to the left or right. Either one is fine, because that's where everyone really pays attention to. Now to damage Winter Todd, you will cut the roots near the braziers, and then you'll burn them at the braziers. I don't like the word braziers because I feel like it sounds too close to brazzers. Fun fact. You can cut the root in order to make kindling. And obviously, to cut the root, you'll need the knife. The kindling will get you 25 points and fletching XP, while the burning the roots will just get you 10. Also, the roots look like logs in your inventory, and I hate it. Fun fact. <laughs> In order to get a drop at Winter Todd, it drops supply crates, you will need at least 500 points, which is pretty easy to get. Uh, apparently if you get 750 points, you get an extra chance at getting a third drop from the crates, and at 1000 points, you get a guaranteed chance, but I wouldn't really bother with that, or it's just a higher chance in general. I'm not actually 100% sure, so I'd recommend just paying attention to getting as much XP as possible. If you're running Winter Todd just for fire making though, burn the logs because the logs will get you more EXP an hour. But if you are running low on points and you need to hit that 500 mark before the end and you're really cutting it close, burn the kindling because kindling will get you more points an hour. So obviously, do logs as much as you can for more XP. Now, the braziers get damaged, and it's very obvious when they get damaged, as it splits in half. And you'll need the hammer to fix that. 
that'll give you construction XP and 25 points, and there's no reason not to do that. Because, you know, free points and construction XP, why not? Also, you'll need to light the fire afterwards, and also, the fire randomly goes out on the Brazier as well. So just pay attention to that, and that'll also get you 25 points, but it'll get you fire making XP this time instead of construction, right? Makes more sense. Lastly, the Pyromancer at the Brazier will need to be healed once in a while if he drops below max health. When he is down, you cannot light the Brazier because it goes out, and therefore you cannot burn anything on the Braziers. To heal him, you'll need one of the unfinished rejuvenation potions, then pick the herb that is on the route to the side of the map, and in order to do that, you must have finished Druidic Rituals, as that is the herb picking requirement. Then simply use those two items together, and that'll heal the Pyromancer. Now the thing is, almost nobody really actually grabs the rejuvenation potions, and usually, if anything, the Pyromancer will only drop and die once in a match, if that. A lot of the times he won't even die, so a lot of people don't really bother with rejuvenation potions. I myself have never once done that. So yeah, and that'll get you 30 points if you do end up doing it, but I honestly I wouldn't recommend caring because either A you'll run to the other side of the map, or B someone else will do it. So yeah, it's really lazy, but I wouldn't pay too much attention to it. Finally, opening the supply crates as soon as you get them is recommended as they drop items that may help at Wintertod. The unique drops are as follows, you get Bruma Torches, Pyromancer Hood, Garb, Robe, and Boots. And the Pyromancer Gear will grant a 2.5 EXP boost from burning all logs, so I would definitely grab those and wear them as soon as possible. Each piece does grab a small EXP boost, but together it's 2.5 EXP. It also drops Warm Gloves, which are purely cosmetic, they aren't actually warm items oddly enough, Tome of Fire, Phoenix Pet, and a Dragon Axe. Now, once you reach three Warm Gloves and three Bruma Torches, you have the option of exchanging them for an extra Supply Crate that has one drop. Don't do that, because once you have three Torches, the drop will be a Torstal Seed, uh, and once you own three Gloves, the drop will be a Magic Seed, which is honestly a lot better, so I'd recommend just holding on to the three. That is really all there is to Winter Todd. It will take around 650 to 800 runs to get from 50 to 99 fire making, depending on how efficient you are, how lucky you are, because you get damaged randomly at Winter Todd. So yeah, the damage interrupts when you're putting the logs into the fire and when you're cutting up the roots in order to make the kindling. Ah, oh, I said logs instead of roots, whatever. So yeah, it's kind of annoying and it is a little RNG based. So sometimes your EXP an hour will be a little faster, a little slower, yeah. Also, you will be getting EXP each round based on your fire making level. So if you successfully get at least 500 points and your fire making is level 75, you'll get 7,500 fire making EXP at the end. You know, it's based on level. If you have 99, then you would get 9,900. If you have uh, level 50 fire making, you get 5,000. Pretty simple. That's all there is to this video, guys. If you liked it, remember to subscribe, follow my Twitter, and follow my Twitch, as that is where I'm streaming, slowly getting 99 fire making when I have free time. I will be streaming on Friday after I'm free, really, for an undetermined amount of time because I work full time and am quite busy. So, yeah, I will see you guys next time.